supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Hi, welcome to Snap Shorts, a series of four to five minutes on Snap's analytics. And today I'm going to show you one of my um, favorite features, which is results at caching. So let's quickly um, show you some documentation. So you can just find this just by Googling, binging it, looking it with Ask Jeeves, etc. So it just gives you some information it's very very useful but now I'm just going to show it to you all right so I'm just connecting to my SQL data warehouse um, my cluster and I'm just going to run that query make sure I'm connected so results at caching is turned off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a query Um, and then I'm going to run this, which is a DMV, which should just return um, the request, the status, when I submitted it, how long it took, um, this label here. So this label has got nothing to do with results of caching. It's just a way of me finding the queries and filtering out all the other things I don't want to see. Query executed. And whether we hit the results at cache. So we're now going to run this. So we can see that we didn't hit the result set cache um, and that's how long it took. All right. So what we're going to do now is turn it on. So to do this, we need to alter the database and then. So in fact, let me just run this. I'll check that it's turned on. Oh, okay. Uh, for those of you who were screaming at me a second ago, I need to actually turn it on rather than execute and turn it off. Now we'll run the query again. Okay, it's the user database. We'll look at our DMV. So now we see the results at cache and change from minus one to zero. So the zero is telling it, the minus one is telling us that it's not turned on. The zero is telling us that it didn't hit the cache. And then if we run it again, we'll see that it hit the cache, but it also ran significantly faster now this is in milliseconds that is 0 0.046 seconds just repeat that 0 0.460 so how this works is all right i'm not sure how deep to go but essentially when a query comes into the um the SQL pool is is a cluster it's multiple machines uh we talk to what we would call a control node or a head node if you're familiar with Hadoop and that passes it down to compute nodes or worker nodes. So in result set cache, when we make that first query, it comes back zero here. That data set is stored on our control node. So when a new query comes in, it comes straight into the control node um, it finds it in the cache and returns it back up to you. So it doesn't have to actually do any work to, to, to analyze the query, to build the query plan, to then execute it against the compute nodes, to then bring the results back from the compute nodes and return it back. So it saves an immense amount of work. Also, it doesn't impact your concurrency. Um, so what you find is that you can scale much, much better. Now I've done some testing with JMeter on my own machine and I have got, I've had over 100 users running on a very small data warehouse and that's because most of them are hitting the cache. So um, you, can, you can scale very, very small data warehouses and serve out lots of users. Um, this isn't going to hurt, this isn't going to, this isn't going to help everybody and this isn't going to make lots and lots of um, you know, systems just speed up instantly. But if you've got anything that's looking at dashboards of running the same queries over and over again, you'll notice massive improvements when doing this. Um, so turn it on. Oh, I didn't mention it's not turned on by default. So you will have to go in and turn it on yourself. 
but as you can see it's just one command um, and if you want to turn it off for a session if you're doing any debugging right just remember you can turn that off and then run your own test all right great all right speak to you later bye so just before you disappear i just wanted to show you something um when you are looking at dm exec requests and you're looking at the cache hit value you will see an integer being returned so a value like minus one see that it's disabled and the values are here um, when you're looking at the documentation in pd uh, dm pdw exec request everything is written in hex now i don't read hex um, I know some of you are cleverer than I am, so I've just put on my GitHub um, the decimal value as well next to it. So you can just do, do the mapping yourself. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.